Okay, just want to let everybody know that all of our council meetings will be audio and videotaped. They'll be shown on the Township of Oceans Community Cable Channel, Channel 22, on Verizon Fios, and Channel 77. On Cable Vision, can I have a roll call, please? Mayor Nessington. Here. Council Member Chair. Here. Fisher. Here. The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied, and a copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the Coaster, posted in Town Hall, filed in the Office of the Municipal Clerk on December 8, 2022. Uh, items for discussion we have with regards here, our Director of Finance. So, Ricky, we have your report. Um, anything you want to update us on? Uh, I know you were asked to be here. I think Dave and I had some questions on uh, one of the reports that was submitted. The other question I have, this, today's your late day, normally in? Tuesday and Thursday. Two. Ricky, if you don't mind, for the council meetings at 7, we get questions on the bill list and stuff, so rather than them being rerouted, like, the next day or the following week, if you could come, like, for, you know, a bit of the public session, there are some financial questions that come up, that would be great. Dave, if you don't mind. This way... Mm -hmm. Those people are not rerouted back, you know, calling you the following day about the bill questions. At least Ricky can answer them, I think, better than any of us on the bill list. Can we start that next meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven o'clock. And look, we just said seven o'clock tea time. Oh, hey. no. well, Ricky, all I'm trying to do is streamline a process, I got man. Because we sit there and we go, wait a minute. We got a. I'm like, hold on, you got to ask Ricky that one. Okay. You know, there's, you know, there's, God only knows how many. All right, so let's go. I was asked to be here, so I didn't know about this. So, what we're of course, I don't have last month's report. Mm -hmm. I thought I had it. But you got this month's report. This month's report. This. That's so last month. this is last. So mm -hmm. I guess what I was looking at was the anticipated, the realized, all that stuff. Are we on track? I seem like there were things that were. You know, I see that. And I get all excited, but I'm no accountant, so I well, just... Well, that's th only through eight months. Okay. So, yes, we're, there's nothing that's come to my attention. I don't believe we're going to in full. So I see that, and I say, oh, wow, $600,000 of, uh, you know, anticipated revenue that's in deficit. Right. That's coming in some form? Yeah, okay. I, I can uh, give you the specifics. This, which is, one this is why you're deficit. here. This is yeah. why you get paid the big bucks, is I'm no accountant. So the biggest one out of that is uh, we have... The interest and costs on taxes of mm -hmm. $148,000. Well, we had our tax sales today. You're not going to mm -hmm. see that, that number until October's report. Okay. That's, a, that's a big hump of it. So, right. I, Ricky, October. I'm sorry. Where are you? What number? Uh, are you looking at last month or this month? Uh, whatever was left for us. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so there's two of them here. So if we look at this month's interest and costs on taxes through nine months, there's $104,000. Yeah. Okay. Got okay. It. We had the tax sale today. That should virtually wipe it out. Okay. So October, I would expect that to be maybe ten thousand, twenty thousand deficit, and then we have two months to collect that money. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, Interlocal with TOSA, we have a deficit of one seventy two five. They've only paid us through half the year. They pay the other half in December. Okay. okay? And the same thing with their surplus contribution. There's a deficit of three hundred three because they haven't paid us a penny. That doesn't come till December. Okay. All right. All right. So I should have believed in the system. I should have trusted you. But I see, <laughs> I see six hundred thousand dollars in, in a hole, and I, you know. Well, if you see right now, it's six hundred eight thirty-one. Yeah, actually, it's one twenty-seven yeah, through nine thirty. Look at the six hundred. So yeah. If you if you see how that progresses, right, when so, you get October's, you'll feel a lot. All right. So okay. <laughs> yeah. And listen, I, I'm not looking to waste your time, but I no, I, I did see this, and I said, wait a minute, you know. In all, I, I understand things change. Life doesn't always throw you the same, you know, fastball. This is a curve here and there, but I was like, holy cow. You know, I got you. That, that's not kosher. It's all good. All right, so I believe you now, and it's all good. So, so this <laughs> is just kind of, you know, it's all real time. Things mm -hmm. change, but the budget is still on track. We're still in the right place. It's all a matter of when it rolls in. Okay. And there's certain, like, if you look at the one for energy receipts tax, there's a $608,000 deficit right okay. now. We're going to have that all by the end of the year because it comes at the first of every month through December. Yeah. So it's just the way it rolls in. All right. And if I thought something was alarming, I would have put it right in the cover letter. Okay. Two years to okay. explain. I don't so think if, this if is going we've happen. got an issue, you're going to let us know about it ASAP. No if doubt. this is just business as usual, then it's just business as usual. All yes. right. Dave, the one thing about the Township of Ocean, financially, we are really fiscally sound and the CFOs have done a phenomenal job. So. 
I'm pretty comfortable with what we got. I mean, looking at you know the reports and stuff. I appreciate it, Ricky. You know, sure. thanks for coming yeah. into the meeting. Hold on, I didn't get my talk. Oh. Oh. I just tried to take the day. You lost the day. I tried, 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 tried to save you. you. Yeah. All I said was I don't remember who asked for it, <laughs> but I said I always ask the question. Just to be clear, the, col the last column is your date percentage realized. Correct. Okay, so year to date, we realized ninety-one percent of our total revenues through nine months. Through nine months, year to date, right? Correct. Got it. Cool. You mean ninety-seven? He's all, all the way down. Oh, at the bottom down. And right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He's encompassing everything. Got yep. Energy tax, which is grand revenue. Yep. Okay. Cool. Right, cool. Yeah. I mean, in years past, we've always been dead on or you know, right where we need to be. So I just saw that number. I said, Oh, am I missing something here? And then you know. <laughs> We're all looking at each other. We're like, well, where's the guy who knows what he's doing? You know? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so we're all good. Okay. Actually, let me do one more follow-up. Uh, this is only through, no, 91% is through um, September. September. Mm -hmm. So that should be 75% of the total. All things being equal, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's the way ro certain revenues roll in, like I just explained. Okay. It's, That's, okay. okay. Yeah. The cash flow ebbs and flows. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. And it was him. <laughs> and it, it was me. Absolutely. It was me. And because I had a question. You the third degree last week. Yeah. I, just, I just said. Maybe the second. I, <laughs> I, I, have nothing, I have nothing from Kelly on here. All right. I'm I got a list of topics, but he's not on it. I just want to I make knew sure. I it was Dave that asked us. Probably after me. Right. Dave. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're in the right place. That's okay. all. Fair enough. You know? Yep. This is all true. What's up? Thanks, Ricky. You got it. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Ricky. Have a good evening. You too. All right. <coughs> okay, uh, Dave. Township. One of the various township matters. Mm. Anything for open? That's what I'm wondering here. <laughs> um, did we want to discuss the ordinance that's on the agenda? What do we want to what is our pleasure? Um, after time, honestly, after speaking with Ron at length, um, I think I'm going to agree to pull it with uh, whoever decides to pull it for the next meeting. Which one are you talking about? The the, the ordinance. The impervious ordinance. Yeah. We're not going to go make mistakes on this ordinance and then have to go back and fix them. I think that we need to do a a one and done. I'm going to tell you what. Can we you discuss know, it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. totally. As we should discuss it. Um, <clears throat> I checked with Ron uh, and went over the impervious coverage uh, percentages, got some concerns from a few different uh, people. Apparently we didn't use the gross lot coverage is what most towns utilize. Um, so I think that we need to really do a one and done. I agree with you having a discussion absolutely let's you know fix this thing do what we have to do because right now margie if i'm not mistaken we're at 75 percent and or effectively and or, and or 90. okay I, I i think it's important to prioritize this given you know the, the flooding that we've had mm -hmm. i mean this really is, has to be a priority um, absolutely single family homes are at 90 yeah. percent in progress but i think we have to make sure that the language is right and is it is it by is it gross lot now? And it it's, it's buildable right now. Buildable right now. Form, and the suggestion was change it to, to gross lot if we're going down to forty percent. What uh, help me understand that? that so Dave, you want gro gross is lot line to lot line, and then buildable is what's kind of buildable in there, which wouldn't include any setbacks, uh, setbacks wetlands, or whatever else is on. So really, when you're doing a buildable Easement. like this. Your percentage, if we say 40% of buildable, you're actually down potentially below 30%, which is a real big swing from where we're at now when most towns are 40. And most towns have it under buildable? Uh, no, gross. Gross. gross most towns down. have it under gross. gross. So can we do it under gross? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what we saying. wanted. And, oh, but right now it's buildable. Sorry, yeah, I got that's it. That's all we're saying. Let's pull it. Let's make it gross. Let's get the right percentage. Let's bring it back for introduction. Keep it clean. Dave, if we could also, when the language is updated and we fix this thing, if we could get a copy of it in advance so that we have any questions prior to the council meeting, this way it's on the agenda for the 9th of November when we have our next meeting. 
done, and I also want to bring Greg up to speak too. He's not here. Well. Cool. Yeah. So that was my thought. I'm thinking I want to hear from Greg, and mm -hmm. I want to hear from Ron Kirk if he's around. You know. Uh, well, Ron waited in all day. He's, yeah. I mean, I know. He's in. I talked to him. Agreement to, uh, yeah. So I mean, I just like we can to have hear him at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are the experts. Let them talk about what this mm -hmm. what this all means. So I'm not a math major, just like mm -hmm. Dave isn't. Um, I did take two accounting classes. There you though. go. I started as an accounting major, but you had to get everything exactly right, and that's that's no fun. Um, so buildable. So just as an example, Mr. Rule Follower. But there's always, always an answer. Right? There is always. Well, that's an why answer. I went to sales. It's not what you say. It's uh, management. It depends on the person. But you like it for the answers. Um, it's too hard. Uh, so here's my lot. This table, and this is my total lot. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying gross lot, you're going to take this whole thing into consideration. Correct. Lot line and lot line. Okay. But if half of it is wetlands, and you're that's, gonna, not, that's not building. building. Correct. But if you're going to give them 40% of yeah. buildable, yeah. buildable mm -hmm. so what, what's, what's more generous? The generous gross. for who? The gross is the value right. calculation. Good point. Mm -hmm. Good. Generous for yeah. who? So the homeowner, it's, what's more favorable for the homeowner, homeowner if they wanted to build more? Build. Gross or buildable? Depends. Depends on the lot. Because each lot's going to be different. Somebody might have a buildable lot to lot line to lot line. Somebody else may have the same lot, but they might have easements and other things that makes it not buildable. Like for example, my sister has a lot that she bought from Kelly's dad years ago. She's got an easement on there. So right. she yeah. can't go anywhere near that section of her land, even though it's her property. So her percentage goes way down on what she can build on her property. Me on the other hand, we have no easement, so we're entitled to right now the 75%, which is huge. But if you have, if, keep me honest again, if mm -hmm. it's gross and you have an easement, and you keep it at 40 using gross versus using buildable, that's worse for us. Or is it backwards? Depends. Well, it's not worse. In that it example. Just, no, it's not worse. It mm -hmm. just makes the number 40%. Now, right now, if you go um, lock coverage, or not lock coverage, if you go building coverage the way that it's worded right now, cut your percentage down, that person has now less property that they can use to build stuff. So it restricts them significantly. Yeah, yeah. so it makes it a lot harder so the, to... So let me explain it this way. Maybe not the, even to... The property owners that have buildable only, that's less than the gross, they're gonna lose out. Because if I have a lot line, a lot line, and I'm all buildable, I'm good. My 40% is gonna be way bigger than the guy who is buildable but his buildable, he might have the same lot size, but his buildable shrunk. So now his 40% is of that shrunken space and not the whole space that I have. So it's basically and giving him the full lot. Because 40% of 100 is, four, is, you know, is 40. 40% of 50% cuts you down. You see what I'm saying? I do, and I guess that's what I'm concerned about, that if you're going to use gross and you can't build on 50% of it, to your point, 40% of 50% is going to take up a lot more of the property, and therefore they're going to have more impervious surface. No. No? Totally None. wrong, because they're limited to where they can build on that. They're exactly. limited to, right. you're still going to have the percentage of the 40% of the 100% of the lot. So for example, 100 by 100, 100, by 100 you got 40% can be covered completely. 60 can't. Now, in the case of the person who has the easement, they're now not allowed 40% of that entire lot. They may have a, an easement that takes up 10 by 100, which is basically, if it's a 100 by 100 lot, and they got 10 by 100, that's 1,000 square feet that they can't use. So now their lump gets into, instead of the 10 by, you know, the 10 by 100, now they've got 90 by 100 that they can use Mm -hmm. And they're allowed 40% of that, which means that they're at 36, really 36% if you look at it. It's more equitable if you do it's it. It's more equitable if you do the growth. Mm -hmm. yes. right. That's the group term, equitable. So that was Margie's term. Mm -hmm. It's a nice term. <laughs> um, well, the thing that concerns me upon talking to Ron Kirk is that the contractors are very savvy. 
And you know, when you start changing the verbiage of these things, they'll make a driveway that's made out of, you know, well, that, crush, you know, well, yeah, so that's that, good then. They can make, they can but have. They all play games, so I, I think that's the only thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. Oh, so my oh, concern yeah. is. Those are ribbon like. Those yeah. are ribbon strips. Yes. And therefore, Ron is going to hammer out this thing. Apparently, you know, we asked Greg to put it together. Obviously, we're having them put together an ordinance where we're giving them the number of 40%, but they write it the way that we tell them, not, you know, gross or whatever. So there's some things that have to be hammered out. Mm -hmm. And you're right, Dave. Somebody could come in and say, all right, I'm going to put the ribbon strips in, which are the, the two lines of cement, and then you got grass everywhere else in the driveway. So now... Well, that's fine. I mean... But it's used to play games, to make the house bigger, because now they have more buildable. This, um, and you know, then the other thing, too, is are you going to overwhelm the zoning board? Are you going to overwhelm the planning board with, you know, because if you don't... The only way to get relief is to go to the zoning board. I assume, or go to the planning. Well, if you go down to the thirty percent, if you go down to what the way this is now, the zoning board is going to get completely overwhelmed because now you've gone from ninety seventy five down to potentially a, thirty or that's less. A, yeah, that's, that's a planning board, board mostly. Issue. Yeah, you're going to have a major issue. Yeah, so that's why I said I just want to hear from the experts and make it a hundred percent so that we just yeah. don't jump into it. Just do it right. That's all. I agree. The impervious coverage is way out of whack in this town. It's the gotta, goal, the goal would be for the next meeting to have this hammered out. So I mean, this really shouldn't take more yeah, than Yeah, we definitely need weeks. to get. Yeah, we definitely do. And get we're only agreeing with you, especially after what's been going on. Totally. But I just don't want to. I'm in agreement with whoever said to pull it because I wasn't really for pulling it. I wanted to get it through, but I also don't want to. I also don't want to. You know, do this twice. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I don't want to do you know the ordinances twice. We'll be making a mistake. We don't need to make mistakes. So as soon as I get it, I'll send it out. Okay. Um, okay. My other three items are all contractual related, legal related, so it will be for closed session. Okay. Uh, let's go around the table. Start with Rob. You want to start with me? Huh? All right. Okay. So uh, skip you and go to. No, you can start. Um, so. Let's go back to naming things. So last meeting, we last meeting or two meetings ago, we did the Myelin Terry Playground at Epwell Park. Last, last meeting. Last meeting, right. Uh, we talked about the golf cage. We can have that conversation as well. And I know my good friend and former councilman has been trying to name the Oakhurst meeting room for seven years, five years, whatever. It's been a long time, ever since he got on council. Um, What's he want to name? Well, he, well, he wanted it named. Period. Uh -huh. So I had brought up um, naming it previously after a former fireman of Oakhurst, who had been the longest-serving fireman in Oakhurst for at the time when he passed. So I don't know how we're going to handle. We discussed my land; it just came up. There was no resolutions that we're doing. Correct. We're just keeping it in here, but there was no process other than just throwing a name out and having a discussion about it. So is that what we're going to do? Wait, uh -huh. Wait. what do you mean there was no resolution? There was a resolution last meeting. We just, everybody it was just from, There was a resolution from the floor. Right, right. From it wasn't yeah. presented in, a, in advance. That's what he's saying. Oh. Okay. There so, was oh. no resolution. We took a, there was nothing in the agenda that had There wasn't any yeah. memorialization. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Other than Pre we all agree. I'm yes. not saying we, we go back on I'm just saying process-wise. So mm -hmm. is that... If, if that's what we're going to do, that's fine. I'll prepare something for Oakhurst meeting room. As long as we're all in agreement, that's the way we're going to do it. I thought we were going to get a Give list me. of... <laughs> uh, yeah, but I thought we were going to get a list of names of people for potentially naming things after. I mean, I... Could I, form a naming committee. Well, we had one. Chris and Rich were the That's name. That's not really a committee. Well, <laughs> when you only got five people, you can't have more than two anyway. So I mean, no, no. I mean, you could, you know, you could have a few other people involved. I mean, it's. Uh, I think we have to. I think we have to, you know, mull that one through. And who is the fireman? Uh, George Bethany. Bethany. Yeah. So. That's. Uh, I'm good. I just want to make sure we either put a process together. I mean, we did myelin without a committee. 
Again, no harm foul, no foul. We just did it, and it was good. We all agreed. It was a good thing to do. It was the right thing to do. Is that? But that's not what you're saying now. So, and that's fine too. I don't know enough about, you know, the options for this particular room, and you know, the. Is that building part of the township? Uh, is that a township building? Because that park is the fireman's park that that we as a town have a 50-year lease on. Is that structure a township building, or is that a fireman's building that we just maintain for them? Good point. I, honestly, All right. I, don't know. I thought it was a township property. It, it very well could be. I just I know that we have a lease on that park. We signed it 50 years, and but it's the fireman's property. Uh, you know, we le they lease it to us for a buck. Correct. And, and there's my guy. The yeah. Township owns the building. Okay. Right. Just like with the, the library. Fireman Memorial Field Corporation owns the land. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Oh, see you. Okay. There you go. Answers yeah. coming from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, we can have well, do you want to create a committee of, like, we would have to get names of people that, you know, don't have anything named after them right now and, um, you know, potentially get names in the hopper of people that have done stuff for the municipality. And on the flip side, what, I think you gave us a list of what has been named. Mm -hmm. so but not Tracy a list. Tracy did that, right? Tracy, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But you haven't given mm -hmm. us a list of what could be named right. <laughs> and I want to, I, listen we could get creative heck we named a path in yeah you know Joe Palaya Park I, I mean we named a street I mean there's a lot of things we can do yeah. this yeah. happens to be a building so that's why yeah. the, the we can name the meeting room. <laughs> we can name meeting rooms right yeah. are we allowed to so I'll pass on that one okay so the best thing I've heard was a committee because I'm all about process mm. so we need process sounds like we need some research to be done too so let's let the committee do the work as long as I'm not on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to buy Joe to chair the committee I'll, if that's what you need. I'll be on the committee if necessary. But <laughs> I will uh, volunteer my services to be on the naming committee. As will I. All right. Okay. I, I would like some, uh, some, just because a lot of things get named, um, you know, more for the men in our community have done things than women. So I would like just some representation of women on that committee. So you volunteer? Um, I'll volunteer. So volunteering. Unless, I'll be happy to volunteer unless Kelly wants to do it. Then she can. Kelly's good. Okay, I'll do it. Well, we can't have. We can't have three. We can't have. Oh, you can't have three. There's only two. Well, well three makes a quorum. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. We council people. Council people. Okay. We could send you our recommendation. She could. You could yeah. review. We had two men last time. Well, let's do a so man. Two men and a man and a woman. Have a say. Step down. Or or say say women. Take it. <laughs> But I do believe there's some I historical what, basis why don't for this. We, uh, why don't we hash out who's going to be on the committee later? Let's move. Yeah, want to put a forward. committee together to decide who's going to be on the committee? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was thinking the same thing, Rob. That's pretty funny. Volunteer? Who wants to volunteer that one? I volunteer. We need a committee for the committee. Right. Um, Can we have the lawyer there, too, to make sure we don't do anything illegal? <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to put a committee together as well. Sir, all kidding aside, we're going to put a committee together yes. to do this. Can and who's going to be you? responsible for getting the committee together? I'm being serious. Mm -hmm. No, you so should be serious because we leave, just so it, we exactly. leave here a lot right. and it's never right. ever settled. So Correct. So we do who is responsible? It, I'm right. fine with that. Who is everybody Margie else? Is yeah, I'm good with it. I don't know. That's council's decision. I'm... I, Kelly on the phone? I'm fine with that, but I would definitely no. like to add some input in, oh, in yeah. so yeah, that's yeah. because like, I think like he needs to do you need to have done something extraordinary to be. Hey Dave, you know, Dave, but, let well, them do the work. Well okay. I thought you and I don't chime good. in late. That's fine. That's coming from them that's to fine. the full council. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean the last committee mm -hmm. made the signs and we found out about it at the dedication. But we can do it differently, right? But we're not. But no, Rob. 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 No, I agree with you. Oh, yeah. 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 But we haven't yeah. done yeah. that. <laughs> we haven't done that here. I mean, yes. we're like being right. totally up front. That's yeah. so, okay. so that's official in the minutes. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. yeah. Thank you, folks. Committee. I appreciate it. it. That yeah. committee brings it forward for yeah. full council for decision. And uh, then individually reach out to us and absolutely. We'll, you know chime in. We might have a name or two we want to throw yeah, out. Oh, sure. Give absolutely. Give them the names of people you think. I think we can just shoot them the names uh -huh. and think about stuff we need named. 
Got it. See, go ahead, Rob. All right, Thanks. thank you. Keep that going. Absolutely awesome. Getting things done. Uh, this is all. What's his name? Greg. 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 Uh, that's fine. I can skip that. I can skip that. All right, Margie. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> now a lot of this is Greg, and he ain't here. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't. I, I know when we talk, I keep saying I'm going to reach out to Ross. On the dog park, I that, got that, a text from him. Oh. He, they just signed or just approved the purchase order for the what we need for the park. Beautiful. He sent me the resolution, so he's all set. Oh, good, we're ready to run. Uh, good progress. Good yeah. answer. Thank you. Hey, I, I'll leave it. I at actually, that. had one for you. There you go. I'll leave it at that. The rest is. Yeah, he sent me here. I never, here it is I right never here. doubted him. <laughs> I didn't even how long. Well, he joked. It's the county, so didn't expect it. They appropriated $53,652 at their last meeting. So Beautiful. they're all set to roll. Good. I'll stop. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, my, my topic was just the dredging of the ponds, but Greg's not here. I know I talked to him last week about the process, and um, I know he's going out. He's sending letters to everyone around Snell Pond yeah. to get that dredging going, and uh, still working with the county to figure out the logistics of it. The mm -hmm. timing is going to happen after the uh, golf course closes, sometime after the first week of November. Cool. I think the toughest thing with that was where the square is going. Right. I think he was trying to resolve that issue. Yeah. Me? Yes. You good? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, are you at, are you appraised of any of the, the paving that's going on, or is that all Greg's thing? That's, I mean, that's Greg. All right, so uh, that's my only. You know, I just had a bunch of questions <laughs> as to because I see you know now we're into twenty twenty three, mm -hmm. so you know and I. Rob had a question via email to Greg, so I don't think he responded, right? He, he did. Oh, he didn't okay. have an answer, but he responded. Okay. He was getting back. He's, so somebody asked about Roosevelt if that was still happening in November, mm -hmm. and. Greg was getting in touch with the contractor to find out. Okay. I'm wondering if I saw another town that had like a map with certain li like like a mm -hmm. line lines on each road when it was going to be. The county does that every year. They put out a whole. But could, could we do something like that yeah, visual so people like you know like color coding on like the last uh, page? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it just has a potential be, to be very disappointing. Good people expect it. Um, and Greg done. does say that because sometimes we end up switching roads for whatever reason. Okay. So then people might like create false expectations. Then, oh, yeah. You think, you know, you're getting your big yeah. street done and you're all bummed out. Or worse, mm -hmm. you're not getting it done. Yeah, mm -hmm. they pull it from this to pay for that. You could put down what has been. Or, yeah, there we go. That's, that's a good idea. It's yes. Most, it's mostly the people that want to know, want to know if they're <laughs> getting done or not. <laughs> Yeah. I also want to know if, uh, and it's probably a good question for Greg too, but um, what we're thinking about doing as far as safety around the new uh, Kepwell Park around there. That'll be next meeting, okay. and um, Mike Patrico's coming next meeting to update us on all, all right. of that. I got a lot of questions about that, because people see it, they mm -hmm. want to use it, and mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, I think... The, the major thing there that we had to halt everything is that there was a required fence that needed to be around yeah. there because we're so close to a... Uh, the water yeah so the fence once that's erected it'll be it'll be open back up yeah but there's other safety features that we're looking at too along with the police department with Greg and Mike because we want to crosswalks and so there's right. a lot of going back and forth right now with traffic and everybody to yeah. see what we can do for it. yeah because that corner is tough I mean mm -hmm. I've lived, yeah I've lived there my whole life it's a tough place yeah. people are ripping around that corner and the kids want to ride their bikes there and yeah. so some cetera. of the things we're looking at is maybe like signage or okay Yep. Okay. Yeah. And to that point, and I sent a text or email to everybody regarding sidewalks, and I didn't bring that up. Thank you. I, is there a sign that says the park is closed? Yes. I know Mike put that up himself immediately there after we found out that we needed to close it. So I just I haven't heard by if you guys There's have. There's a billboard to John Candy out there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> folks. Park's closed. <laughs> is it at the street? Because I know the neighbors are complaining that cars are still coming up. Is it? Like where is? The it's right. The barricade. Oh, I don't know exactly where it is. Yeah, it's at the barricade. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I think that because I think the sign is barricade. The barricade yeah. So they can't get to the house. Can't get it. Got. Can't anywhere. get anywhere. We close. Yeah, every, that everything's so okay. That's closed off for other safety reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Thanks. All right, let me hit Kelly stuff. Okay. Um, animal control contract volume report and the OPA request as it relates to that. 
Wait, let's take one at a time. So well, those are, she lumped them into one thing. Was there an open request in regard to the contract? That's Jesse. I haven't seen one, but yeah. they have, we sent them the contract. She, was, she was anticipating one, and we will be discussing the animal control contract and, and executive session. Okay. Good. Uh, next point, emergency relief fund. Um, That's the dwelling unit. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing there is we don't have an administrative home who is going to finish because there's certain apartments that are not on the list and have not paid into the fund as right. per the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So we need an administrator to make it make it make uh, folks make get in compliance. Right. So that's my task right now, and it's either going to fall in one of two locations: they either fall on code enforcement or community development. The community what thing? Development. Thank you. So we just we have to get caught up on what we need to get into yeah. that fund. Yes. And pretty can, yeah, I mean that's there's, pretty, there's a lot of funds in there, a lot of people are in compliance, but there's certain yep. apartment buildings that are not in compliance. I they probably that. don't even know about it. Yeah, I figured. But that. somebody has to write the letter to send to them, to chase it down, to get the money, yep. deposit mm -hmm. the money. Who, yeah, so who's doing all of that is the question. So we'll get on top of it now and we'll get caught yep. where we need to get. And I'm sorry, can you enlighten us? What's the funds for? This is the, the dwelling uh, committee where there's five members on it. Um, it is myself, the CFO, community development director, public works director, and there's one, oh, Kelly, Kelly as the chair. So those funds are used if, if someone comes from one of the apartment buildings um, and it's defined as four units or more, if they come and say, hey, we've been complaining for the last six months to get something that's not working. Okay. We then can make an executive decision on to do that. Okay. So one of the other things that concerns me with that is that who qualified on that committee and or in the township to make that decision that is not happening. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other thing and we, we'll have to vet that out a little bit more too. So it's not a rent control board. No. It's just an emergency no. relief. Is, yep. So, so you have an extraordinary situation. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to you. If we have to go so in there and repair something because the landlord's not doing it, we have the money in the till to do it, and then we go back for the reimbursement. That was what I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. but the scary part again with me, and I'll confer with the with the attorney. What gives us the right as the board to go ahead and make that decision to fix something and tell them you got to put the money back in? <laughs> well, that's so. when we're going to confer with the attorney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Ron Kirk backfill status uh, hasn't been posted yet. Uh, it will be posted early, probably Monday. We're sending it over to the league. Okay, sounds good. I think Jesse just got it like late this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> Hot <laughs> off the presses. <laughs> you probably didn't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, public information officer. Actually, let me back. That's that's for because we're looking for a planning administrator. Right. Just so everyone's clear on what we're actually looking for. Yep. Planning admin. Yep. And what was the next question? Man? Public information officer. She asked for that or asked for uh, requested over the summer. Oh, right. We talked uh, about that before. Vetted by legal. She wants to make sure that a message is coming out. If it's coming out from us, it's coming out from if, if one If that three. is the pleasure of counsel, then we need to budget for that. Because okay. there's no budgetary line item for yep. PIO. And then we need to also um, reconcile with, with the chief to make sure we don't, because the, the police department has a PIO, a right. designated officer when there's like emergencies and stuff, but I think you guys are looking just for more community communications to get out there. Is that correct? Yeah, I think when we're putting out um, stuff about town, it should be uniform and, you know, come from the one, the, the one entity and then you know, we can get on, jump on the bandwagon and share it out or whatever. This way you got, you know, a message coming out that's uniform. I and think that's two, totally what Kelly's looking for. we have two for. options. We can either hire somebody, that's probably like a part-time job. Right. Or we might be able to or uh, somebody get a vendor might. who actually does communications with people. A lot of towns do that. Or, Dave, do we do any stipends in here for people that want to... <laughs> Do, do we have, there. let me ask you a question, Dave, do we do stipends in here like we do in the school system where there's a stipend for the additional, you know, um, work that somebody I haven't seen too many stipends here. Okay. Is that an option? It's either, it's either hourly, part-time, okay. full-time. Is it an option? 
like if somebody wanted to pick it up and let's say they I wouldn't see why not it's okay but we just we don't have anything in our ordinance set up for stipends I don't believe unless I mean you could like the emergency management gets you know I call it out of salary but it's probably more like a stipend Right for for those type of yeah. part time positions like that might be an option to think about for an employee that's here that might want to pick up you know a few bucks and that's computer savvy, mm -hmm. social media savvy that they can put the information out with the tagging and all that other stuff and then you know it it'll you know I see Kelly makes a real good point here with it you know oh yeah we've been talking about this yep. I yeah, mean, two years now since I've been here. Yep. So I think we landed. And we we look to budget. You know, and like you said, it's not definitely not a full time job. Mm -hmm. Even though they I do, mean, I do it part time now. Yes, How you much do. time? Well, there's take really. I mean, you do a lot of stuff part time, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna actually agree with. I try to hire, but he doesn't want to work for me. <laughs> I don't think I said it that way. <laughs> I do remember it. the conversation. But I don't remember you the response. You said I couldn't pay you enough. Oh, okay, that was the answer. I didn't remember what I said. But uh, I, I agree with um, somebody internal probably could probably handle it Yeah. today. Yeah. Tracy's kind of, she's overwhelmed already. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. 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 Well, I don't want to throw things out. In My biggest session, issue with this whole thing is session. that it's easy to disseminate information like, hey, Fall Fest is next week. Everybody loves that. That's yeah. easy. Responding. It's the problem is is that you almost need somebody to, to monitor this thing, to have a finger on the pulse and be like, hey, what's going on on West Park Avenue? And now we're starting to cross into mm -hmm. PD, we're starting to cross into DPW. So that's where this gets a little challenging. And I think, you know, the problem is everybody wants instantaneous information. You know, what's mm -hmm. going on over here? What's going on over there? Why did, what was that big noise I heard? And I'm like, uh, so... Yeah, it's going to be an interesting job because you, you know, I don't want somebody sitting on their, their phone all day, but yeah. you know, yeah. you volunteering? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. More information. Well, one of the things is you have to monitor. You bring up a very good point. Yeah. You have to monitor the the social media feedback all the time mm -hmm. because people will start to say things that will start. Um, it'll start to snowball. People will, you know, this is not right. Blah blah blah. So. You can't just take somebody uh, who's who knows how to use a computer and throw them in as your PIO. They got to be trained. Mm -hmm. So that's FEMA offers a lot. We're of happy to train. You. Hmm? We're happy to train you if that's where you're going. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> you know me. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Let's Deer. We're deer. Okay. Yeah. Very close um, to getting something started. Um, we're at the at the end of our fiscal year, so January we will we'll have a contract on, but we will get a purchase order in place to enable us to utilize the consultant to be able to start some preliminary things like help us get the uh, application completed and finished to DEP uh, Wildlife. So that should be happening, I mean, like, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get that purchase order done and get that person, there. they're currently working in Princeton. So right. as they begin to free up from there, they'll be able to focus on ocean. Cool. But our major thing is getting the application into the DEP to get the ball rolling. Okay, uh, that affordable housing, uh, she, the which was DeVito, he had the concern from Primrose when he came, you know, came Oh, yes. Um, yeah, she provided a response to the team as, uh, was DeVito's concern ever responded to publicly? She, she want that and she wanted, I think, a written response to go back to that gentleman over there. So I think we need to work on that. Okay. Um, the grant application for the Kepwell Trail. She was talking about with Monmouth County and. Oh uh, yeah, that is submitted. But I don't, we haven't heard anything. Yet. Yeah, that's. I, uh, and then there was the ordinance. She's you know we already dealt with that. And that's all Kelly has. She wins today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's busy on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Very efficient.
Uh, that's all I have. Let's go to uh, the public. Let's start back over here. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. You want to stand up? The, the camera's there. You want to just sit next to Mr. Brown or stand up? Okay. Just state your name and your address. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, hi, my name is Amy Levy. I am 15 years old and I am a sophomore at Hell Yeshiva High School. And I've actually lived here since I was two years old. Um, I have had a love for reading since I was very little, from when my parents would read me bedtime stories as a child until now, which like it's my favorite pastime, I love to read always. And I would like to bring a similar love for reading to um, this town. And in doing so, I have two ideas. My first one would be to make three locations of these thing called little free libraries, in which people could take books, um, swap books, get books. It's uh, basically a, a space for anyone to be able to read. And I also have an idea that people would be able to put little notes in the books that they read and give them back to kind of give like recommendations or what they thought about the book. And it would kind of like be a way to bring everyone together. And I would be the one to raise the money to purchase these libraries. They are about $300 to $500 each. And I would be the one managing them and restocking them with books and like cleaning them and all that. My second idea would be to start a YouTube channel to kind of um, make videos of me reading books for all the little children across the world who their parents might be busy with jobs and they don't really have time to get those bedtime stories like I did. I feel like this would be a great, a great plan to um, develop a love for reading from a very young age. And I would also be open to reading um, stories at the local libraries for children as well. So if you guys have any other ideas, I'd love that. That one's great. Great idea. Yes. You know where you want to put the library? Yeah, in like public city spaces, like um, such as like Joe Play Park or Wayside Park and things like that. Nice. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. We do have some other requests in, mm -hmm. so definitely run that um, past my office so that we can um, make sure that we're not duplicating the little libraries yeah. in the same locations. There's yes. actually an um, app which shows all the locations of them. So whenever oh, you good. have one, you register it, and it shows where all of them are. Okay. That's great. Or Mimi, we've got a brand new park. We can use a brand new little book thing. That's right. Yeah. 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 Trust me, it will look nice yeah. over there. Yeah. Plenty great of idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice little park I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. kids don't like to read, right. including right. this kid when I was here. <laughs> I did not like to read. What, what's the app mean? Um, it's called Little Free Library. Yeah. I would love That's to how I learned about this it is a, from the last time somebody came. Did they have like a store yeah, nice. they have like a store yeah, and they can purchase them and then yeah. yield them. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I would love to see also an Ocean Township because I know we have a number already, like a map of where they already are. Yeah. You know, for people to know. So yeah, we could probably just print that like a picture of this. Yeah, and the other thing is once you find your location, still let us know too because public works and engineer will make sure you not put it on any utilities or yeah. anything yeah. like that too. Like a safe and, place. And recreation yeah. too to make sure they don't have any uh, so plans for that Yeah, space. we have to like pick a certain place yep. to be able to. Yep. Yeah, and we'll give you the thumbs up because it's a great idea. Thanks so much. Yep. Great. Thanks, Mimi. Thank Appreciate you. you coming yeah. in. Thank, Thank you. You can stay for the rest of the meeting and enjoy all the <laughs> exciting. Let's go around the horn. Jack. Uh, yeah. I uh, mentioned the planning board is making decisions about what is going to be done. The planning board has no authority, as I understand it, to order or direct anything, including the other boards. They have no authority. Take care. They can send ideas or express ideas but they have no authority to approve anything. The planning board? Yes. They have the authority to grant variances. They do? Yes, they That's do. That's what I understood from the attending a planning board meeting. I don't know what to say. They have nothing to say. I mean, they can suggest to the, to the, uh, to the board that does that. They are the, the they are the board. The, the, plan, the, planning, the planning board? Well, what did, yeah. let's, let's get to the heart of what are we trying to do? Or what was brought to them to do? They would get they would get things ready for the people that do that and hand out uh, you know permissions to do something to your property. Well, it depends on what it is because it could be the zoning board. Well, you, but the, I mean, it, it depends on what's being asked. If, for example, somebody makes an application like uh, that says I want to make an impervious surface of now it's allowed seventy percent. 
and somebody says, I want to do 100%, they would apply to the planning board and say, can I have a variance? I want to do more than 70%. Would you let me do it? And they have the authority to grant it. If somebody want, took a, uh, a house in Wayside and said, I want to turn this into a... Um, a, uh, a store, yeah, a commercial a, store, yeah, yeah. they would have to go before the zoning board and the zoning board would could grant them a use variance. That would that's that's that authority. But if it's something like um, whether or not they have a uh, let's say this council introduces an ordinance for uh, to change a bulk variance or, or change the impervious Thursday, service. Yeah. Uh, it, they get to say whether or not it is in accordance with the master plan. Uh, who, produces, who produces the master plan? It, well, the planning, the, the planning board approves the master plan. Well, it's their plan. That, that's the planning yeah, board's master plan. That's why like, when we're changing this impervious surface, once, the, once it's introduced here, it has to go to the planning board, and they have to say is it consistent with the master plan. But they have no enforcement power, as I understand it. Enforcement? Uh, well, if somebody, if they grant a variance and somebody ignores it and goes above and beyond, yes, they, they don't have any enforcement ability. That would be code enforcement or the, or the engineer uh, of the municipality. In that aspect, they have, that's where the enforcement is. But the power to grant or deny variances is within their uh, abilities. Must these other organizations uh, accept what the plan board says? <coughs> I, I mean, well, I'm, like what organizations are you speaking of? Because there's also some called compliance resolution. Well, I was at a planning board meeting, I think it was September 18th. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of discussion about the plan, the, 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 new, the new plan. The okay. master plan. The master master plan. plan. And it didn't seem to me like the, the planning board had any authority to make that plan work. They don't have the authority to enact the ordinances. They can establish the, call it the outline of the plan. This is the plan. This is the idea of where the township is now and is going to be. But the ordinances that go into the, the, the structure of how this is being carried out is, is this board. So I did not come away with that conclusion. So Jack, I was at the same meeting, and I think your confusion is is that we produced this document as the planning board, right. as the master plan. Right. This now master plan has to go to the council, correct? It, it, no. no it's just, so these are all guidelines and suggestions. Right. The council then has the uh, option to create the ordinances if we want to enact the changes that are in the master plan. Right. That's my understanding. Yes. Right. Okay. But the planning board has no authority to tell them to do it. So what I learned from that is that the council has the right to accept, modify, or reject the master plan. But if you reject, you have to have a super majority to... The plan, the plan, the plan, the plan yeah. in and of itself is the planning boards. Yeah. yeah. The ordinances are the councils. Mm -hmm. So you can have a plan that says we think that... This area of 35 should we'll switch it and now be residential. That's our plan. We like it. Come back to the council and they say that is a really not smart plan. We're not going to change that ordinance. So we're going to leave it, and you know the planning board could say, but that's not in accordance with the plan. Which at that point the council goes, well, you know it's a highway corridor that doesn't make sense. Here's the reason why we're not going to do it like that. But the plan. Yeah. In and of itself is the planning board. Yes, yeah, the planning board's document. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, and I see where you're going with that. I think talking. now it's the it's the responsibility of the township manager and the community development director to read the plan that has been approved and to recommend to this body what needs to be enacted via ordinance or resolution or whatever we need to do to enact it. I think that's what you're looking for. So can I ask? Okay, Jack. So can I ask an interesting, I think an interesting question then. So when there are candidates out there say that the current council isn't following the master plan, based on what I just heard, if the council doesn't approve the suggestions 
from the plan. The plan, respectfully, is just a piece of paper from the planning board. They don't necessarily have to follow it. And if we're not passing ordinances, that yeah, was the right a, word. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always so like the impervious mm -hmm. coverage, Okay, I believe that is in there. It is in there. Okay. So there's a recommendation that you will enact, and you will send it back to them saying, we're now going to make it this, and they're going to say, oh, this is consistent with the plan, and send it back to you. What if it isn't consistent with the plan? Then the planning board, this is what Dave was trying to say, then they'll say, this is not in, this is not consistent, inconsistent, we don't agree with you approving this, but they can approve it with an explanation on why they're approving it in the resolution for that council meeting. And or, even okay. if they don't, give me one second, mm -hmm. even if they don't, we can still approve it. That's what I just said. Mm -hmm. I heard you say that. Okay. You're going to override okay. their Got it. inconsistency okay. by saying, Here, here's, we're still going to do this, Got it. but here's why we're doing it. It has I'm to sorry, be spelled sorry. out yeah. in the resolution. Got it. That's Got why it. the master plan is a guidance I mean, document. thank you. Right? Yes. Yes. Like it's a, do a document providing guidance. It's not a... Essentially a vision. Of a vision. Thing. Yes. Yeah, it's a sure. guideline for the future. Guideline. Just like we're doing Not a strategic a plan at this ordinance. level. But if we can say we're going to do this, this, and this, but if we don't want to enact it by putting teeth behind it, right. which is other ordinances and actually doing things, it'll just be a strategic plan that's sitting on the shelf collecting dust. So I'm going to mix words. So you can enforce a master plan in theory. You can enforce the ordinances that support the master plan. Yes, that's a great way to put it. Enforce them or embrace them? Enforce. Once it's an ordinance, you can enforce it. Correct. The planning board doesn't enforce it. The, the, no, the, the township, township, township enforces right. it. Okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. The planning board has no authority to enforce anything. So, yes. to your point, you're With correct. The regarding yes. the master plan. Thank it you took us a while to get there, Jack, but now we know what you're talking about. That's good. You're correct. Good stuff. But you got to have ordinances in place to enforce, and the ordinances are enforced by the township. And it will depend. It could be the police department, it could be community development, it could be UCC, it could be code enforcement, it could be the town map, depending on how the ordinance is written and who's the enforcer in the ordinance. But it will never be a planning board. Oh, isn't that what I said? The planning yeah, that's what I said. You're correct. Yeah. Now now we got it all out here. We, 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 we understand what so you're all saying. All the effort that goes into the planning board can end up with nothing. Well, now that's why the ball is in my court now to read and talk with the community development team and bring recommendations. Okay. And one of them we're already bringing, which is the impervious coverage, coverage. which was discussed tonight. Do we need a planning board? <laughs> Absolutely. Legal. You do because yeah. the state says you have to. The state says you have to or you don't get certain things attributed to you. Yeah, but well, you, need, you have to have plans. Yeah, somebody has to regulate you all that. You have to have a plan because the state says so. True, it's a statute, yes. It's a statute. The state statute, if you want this, you gotta, you got to have a planning board, even though the planning board has no power. Well, they have well, power. They do have power. They have power. You're just singling out one specific mm -hmm. power that they don't have. Which is the master plan Correct. enforcement. They have power. They have the power Trust to reject or approve any application. Go. Yeah. And, and, and that and you know their only remedy is to go to court after that they're, they're not building if the, if the town says we're not building whatever the planning board says we're not doing that then their only remedy is to go to court I mean so we do the, have a lot of authority yeah, when the planning board approved deal in 35 you know, that we couldn't come back and say no we don't agree with you we, we didn't have that power we did we didn't yeah, sure. Oh, we did. Sure. We could have said no. We could. Have, what? No. If the planning board, if the planning board grants say, no say to them? not give it, well, we wouldn't give a developer's no, grant. Not in this one. No. no. We would reject a developer's agreement. Because in Bradley Beach, they had that power, but it was in that. That's a different point. Oh, that's it. Well, what was the approval was was variances yes. and site plan. Well, the appeal went. To, does any appeals from the planning board come here? <coughs> it goes right yes. to court. No. Right. If yeah, you, no, you can zoning. Appeals. Well, we're talking about planning board. There's no appeals to here to this council. There we go. But, that's, but mm -hmm. we we can say no by denying a, a builder's agreement, mm -hmm. a um, developer's agreement. But in theory, planning board said yes. We well, say we'll no. get sued. Well, I, I yeah. got it. No, 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 no <laughs> I got it. And I'm that's not, not theory. Yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the okay. other thing I. <laughs> Playing board one on one education. <laughs> yeah, this is good though. Yeah, it was a good conversation. No, it is. It is. Okay, next, Jack. I think you should consider whether or not to empower him in some way. I don't know. 
That's a statute. Statute. Yeah, statute. 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 That's that's for the state legislature to debate. I'm saying I'm talking about our planning board, which has to correspond. It has to be there. Whatever the hell it does, mm -hmm. does the state tell them what it has to do? Yes. Yeah. What authority it would have? Yeah. Yes. That's in the uh, municipal land use law. We'll get you a copy of that. <laughs> Thank you. Janet. Uh, dredge foils and small lot, 40% impervious. Uh, Dave, you mentioned the exit from Highway 18 eastbound on Deal. If you could put a post-it note together, is it suitable to dump the spoils there? If you need X number of feet widened there, if a exit would ever in the future need to exist, that could potentially be a place to put dredge spoils where the toxicity, the mild toxicity, would be in a mildly harmless location. So hold the thought that if you need to slightly widen the exit of 18 eastbound on Deal, and you need a place to dump dredge spoils, and the gods say it's possibly suitable, there may be both a need for soil and a source of soil, and you could just kill two birds with one stone. So yes. hold that thought. Okay. It has a very unlikely probability yeah. of all the gods lighting up. But if you need to widen that exit slightly and you have dredge spoils and all the engineering lines up, you have a source of soils and a place to put the soils. So just a post it note to consider a place. Because if, if you need to widen it, you need soil, and you're dredging and you have soil, hold that thought. Um, on small lots, the 50 foot and 75 lots, when you go to a 40% coverage, you're really causing a situation where every patio being built on the smaller lots is going to cause a need to go before board. On the larger lots, 40%, God bless you. On the 50 foot, 75, and even 100 foot lots, you're going to have a huge number of people exceeding the 40% and run it through a common sense test. Thank you very much. Uh, he kind of like the tree ordinance. That's, that's why, why you're doing That's it why we pulled the order. No, no, no. Yeah, but we didn't is. discuss that thought. Yes. That by zone. Maybe we R1. By R1. size, R1. percentage yeah. by. By size. zone, maybe zone size, like R1, R2. These are oh. large lots. Three. three. Right. Well, every, every you're year using a percentage. Off. You're not using a number. The trees use the numbers. So the same number that's over on the east is on the west. So that's way different. But <coughs> the percentage is percentage. So whether you do 40% of a 50 by 100 or 40% of a 100 by 100, whatever, it's still 40% of the lot. If you kill the small lot. But the people. object is we have a problem with impervious coverage in the municipality right now. And yeah. I, I, you know, I would consider going as high as potentially 45%, but we have a, an issue that we need to work on. Right now, Jim, we're at 75, which is unacceptable for the town. Well, I'm, I'm cool on the large yeah. lots, knock yourself out, but on the small lots, you're really going to potentially hit yourself with some administrative problems on every patio that's going in. But uh, we'll review. We'll all. review it with the engineer and our attorney and uh, manager, and you know we'll, we're going to come up with these with, with this ordinance by the next meeting. That's what you were said before, John, earlier today. What's that? That was you had commissioned somebody yeah. yesterday to take care of Dave. Pull, take care somebody. Pull no, he's working on the naming. No, no, that. No, it's not that Dave. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll get working. it hammered out. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, okay. Um, all right, so we'll go. I have a question, on. but I'll bring it to the next table for it doesn't make any difference for next time. Okay. It has, yeah. to, it has to do with code enforcement and the difficulties with getting that done. We have to do with it. Okay, no, okay. We're at Section 8 of the Public Oak Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from steam in certain circumstances. And whereas this public body is of the opinion that certain circumstances present in this town, therefore be resolved that the Township of Council, Township of Ocean County of Monmouth, the public shall be excluded from the discussion and or action herein here after specified subject matters. Roll call.
Mayor Napolitani? Yes. Deputy Mayor Donnelly? Yes. Ed Sheriff? Bishop? Yes. I want to remind everybody that all Township Council meetings will be audio and videotaped. They'll be shown on Township of Ocean's Community Cable Channel, Channel 22 on Verizon Fios, and Channel 77 on Cablevision. We have a roll call, please. Mayor De Napolitani? Here. Deputy Mayor Donlin? Here. Council Member Achera? Here. Fisher? Here. Terry? Here. Please stand for a pledge to the flag and remain standing as we do a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to have a moment of silence in, um, especially with everything that's going on right now overseas. Thank you, you may be seated. The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the Coaster, posted in Town Hall, filed in the Office of the Municipal Clerk on December 8, 2022. There are two emergency exits to my right that'll take you to the front of the building and one to the rear that'll take you to the back of the building. All cell phones must be turned off and if you need to make a call, kindly step outside and turn your phone off. Uh, I'm going to start with council comments, start down at the end with the ladies. Let's start with Councilwoman Terry. I have nothing to report at this time, I'm sorry. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Donlin. Uh, a few comments. Um, first of all, election day is coming up November 7th. Um, there are uh, changes uh, to a polling location in Ocean Township. So if you used to vote at the Presbyterian Church on the Hill, uh, the new polling location is the Ocean Township Gym and Sports Complex at uh, 100, I'm sorry, 1010 West Park Avenue, and that affects the Ocean Township voting districts 14, 15, 16, and 22. So that's a new polling location um, if you voted at Presbyterian Church on the Hill before. Um, I just want to say thank you to... Uh, Jen uh, and the crew at the uh, at recreation. The Fall Fest was an amazing success. Um, it was one of the best we've ever had. I know my kids had an amazing time. It was a beautiful day. Um, so thank you for that. The next one coming up is October 25th. We have a trunk or treat event in Joe Palea Park, um, which we always enjoy. Um, but tonight, I just want to say at the foremost of my thoughts, are right now and uh, these past few days are with our Jewish brothers and sisters in our Ocean Township community and beyond. Uh, the terror attacks that is happening right now on innocent women and children and the people of Israel by Hamas are beyond horrific. And I stand in solidarity with you by condemning these atrocities carried out on innocent human lives. I want to say thank you to our Ocean Township police for off offering their extra vigilance and protection of our Jewish community, students, and schools during this time. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilman uh, Fisher. Yeah, so I'd like to uh, also say that uh, I agree with Deputy Mayor Donlin. I'm, it's a tough time in the world right now, and I think we've all got to be, uh, you know, taken back by what's happening right now. And it's it's hard to watch. I'm sure our kids are affected, our lives are affected, but you know, these things hit home sometimes too. And I want people to understand that, you know, you have one of the greatest police departments, they're dedicated to your safety and security. But I'd also like to tell you that in light of, you know, what's happening in the world, if you see something, you have to say something. They're out there, but the people in the community become a force multiplier and you know, we don't want to have any problems here on our soil. So um, be vigilant and uh, let's pray that this hope this thing ends real soon. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman and, Chair. Again, I'll echo Dave's and Margie's comments and um, I will just share a conversation I had with uh, somebody from the Jewish community today and uh, he was asking about security and how, how we're going to uh, protect them. And I, I agree with Councilman Fisher and uh, Deputy Mayor that 
our, our police are, are second to none and, and they have done a phenomenal job. But I did make the comment that I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to reach out to the community. And uh, the person sort of put me at ease and said, um, as long as you're thinking of us. And I can certainly assure you, I'll speak for myself in thinking, but I can assure you the council has been in constant contact with the police department for security purposes. And uh, we're, they're doing their best, as, as was said, uh, to protect the community. But certainly my heart goes out to the members of the community, their relatives. I did speak to somebody two days ago who had two relatives that did pass uh, in, in, uh, in Israel and it does hit home. So um, thoughts and prayers uh, as best can be. On a different note, uh, Greater Ocean Township Chamber of Commerce is having their annual comedy night and gift auction. Uh, that is Friday, November the 17th. It's at the Res Renaissance, excuse me. It is always sold out. It is a great evening. Uh, tickets this year are $95, but if you order by next week, you will get $10 of raffle tickets for free. So uh, you can go on the website, uh, gotcc.org, and get your tickets. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Dave. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have uh, any report this evening. Thank you, sir. Matt. Oh, nothing to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. And uh, just to echo the sentiments of Deputy Mayor Donlin, who said it so eloquently, um, I don't think any of us could have said it as good as you did. Margie, thank you very much. Uh, the only thing I want to state to the community is yes, uh, to echo what uh, Councilman Chair and uh, Fisher said. Our police department, our chief, have been in contact with us ever since it started. Um, I have the utmost confidence in the police department that they will continue to remain vigilant as they always are. They have stepped up presence around our synagogues, uh, shuls, and Hillel School along with Elon. So I assure you that we will continue that uh, stepped up presence out in the community. And yes, uh, to answer what Rob said, we are thinking of the community. Um, and it's a large community and we're here for you. Uh, and please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us if you have any, any concerns. Thank you. Okay, so uh, public portion. Uh, all matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine by the Township Council and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items. If discussion is desired on any item, that item will be considered separately. The purpose of the public portion is to solely ask questions to understand resolutions that appear on this agenda. All questions not related to the item on this agenda should be asked during the public comments portion at the conclusion of the meeting. So if you have any questions as it relates to the consent agenda, all our resolutions, kindly step to the microphone. State your name and address for the record. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Andrew DeLoyan. I'm an Ocean resident at 164 Orange Street in Oakhurst. Um, and I'm a political science student at Rutgers University interested in studying local government. Uh, so I just have two quick questions about some items on the agenda. Uh, so the first one is about resolution 23197 uh, with the purchase of the three sanitation trucks. So I was just curious if Ocean residents will see the effect of the purchase of these three trucks in next year's um, tax, um, like in their taxes, if they'll see that effect. Two, three. Uh, number three on the list. Yeah. They were budgeted for this year. So next year we'll budget what we need to budget and you know for other trucks or other um equipment that we have perfect thank yeah. you so much yes. and then uh my other question was about its um ordinance uh number one about the land there'll, there'll be questions on oh. ordinances they are okay. actually separate oh okay so you can gotcha. step up thank you so much then. absolutely right. thank you for coming to the microphone anyone else wishing to be heard on any of the resolutions please step up to the microphone state your name and address Seeing here none, do I have a motion to accept resolutions 23, or actually the entire consent agenda, resolutions uh, 23195 through and including 2309. 2309. Someone please move. I'll Offer. move for the resolutions. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Uh, vouchers, individual action, vouchers in the amount of $8,744,172.08. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. Second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. 
uh, ordinance is up for adoption. We have ordinance 2433, which is an ordinance amending chapter 23, land disturbance and soil erosion control of the code of the Township of Ocean. Can someone please open public discussion on ordinance 2433? I'll make a motion to open public comment on ordinance 2433. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napotani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2433, please step up to the microphone. Um, sorry, uh, sorry about the mistake of it. Yeah, we <laughs> forgot who you were. <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew DeLoyan, and I'm a resident at 164 Orange Street uh, yes, in sir. Oakhurst. Um, and so my question about uh, this ordinance is, um, was there a specific situation or event that triggered the need to um, like refine the standards and safeguards uh, related to this ordinance? Or has this just been like a trend that the town has noticed over time and like something that needed to be addressed? The municipality, the elected officials are very cognizant of what's going on with building and um, soil erosion, water runoff and things of that nature. So we're trying to be a little more proactive as a council here. Um, you know, that's, you know, the main thing that we want to do. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any follow-up questions? Hey, Rob, let him sit. <laughs> <laughs> anyone wishing to, anyone else wishing to be heard? <laughs> Seeing him, so, uh, someone please close public discussion on Ordinance 2433. I'd like to make a motion to close the public comment on Ordinance 2433. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2433. I'd like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 2433 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Ordinance 2433 passes. Ordinance 2434, in order to amending and supplementing Chapter 13, Taxation, of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965. Someone please open public discussion on Ordinance 2434. I'd like to make a motion to open public discussion on Ordinance 2434. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2434, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the... Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2434? Make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2434. Second. Second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Uh, action on Ordinance 2434. I'd like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 2434 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Ordinance 2434 passes. Ordinance 2435, an ordinance amending Chapter 12, Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965. Someone please open public discussion on Ordinance 2435. I make, make a motion to open public discussion on Ordinance 2435. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Uh, da, da, da. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2435, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2435? I'd like to make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2435. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Aye. Yes. Aye. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2435. I'd like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 2435 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletan? Yes. Ordinance 2435 passes. Ordinance 2436, an ordinance amending Ordinance 2338 entitled an ordinance fixing salaries and compensation of certain offices, positions, and employees in the Township of Ocean County of Monmouth. Can I have someone open public discussion on Ordinance 2436? I make a motion to open public comment on Ordinance 2436. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2436, please step up to the microphone. State your name and address for the record. 
Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2436? I'll make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2436. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2436. I'd like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 2436 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Ordinance 2436, an ordinance, I mean Ordinance 2437, an ordinance amending and supplementing Ordinance 2343, which is entitled an ordinance amending the revised general ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, relating to personnel, policies, practices, and procedures. Can I have someone open public discussion on Ordinance 2437? I'd like to make a motion to open public discussion on Ordinance 2437. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Don. Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Step ten. Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2437, step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2437? I'll make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2437. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2437. I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 2437 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Achera? Sorry. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Ordinance 2437 passes. Introductions of ordinance. We'll start with Ordinance 2438, which is an ordinance amending Chapter uh, 16 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, entitled Parks and Playgrounds. Can someone please introduce Ordinance 2438? I'll make a motion to introduce Ordinance 2438. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Ordinance 2438 will have its public hearing on November 9th at our next council meeting. Ordinance 2439, which is... Oh, yeah, that's being pulled. Sorry. 2439 is being pulled. Uh, we hope to have it on next meeting. We'll open up for public comment. Anyone wishing to be heard on anything germane to the Township of Ocean? Questions, comments, concerns? Please step up to the microphone. Again, state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Hi. My name is Beverly and Sean Richardson. Um, our address is 2115 Alden Road, mm -hmm. um, apartment 8B, um, Ocean Township. Um, and we're here tonight because we want to discuss an issue of um, things that's been going on in our apartment. And um, we have went to court about it. We've talked to um, a judge about the issues. Um, we've talked to the council then about the issues. And they told us we have to come to you. So they said the next thing when they have a um, town meeting, to go to the meeting and to address these issues with you because you're the only one who has the jurisdiction to deal with these issues that we have going on with our apartment. Um, the problems that we have is repairs and we withheld our rent. We held it for about, I guess about eight months, but we kept it, we had it all. So when we went to court, the gentleman that um, worked with us in the courtroom, he said he's been doing that for 30 years and this was the first time that someone has ever came in here and had all of the rent. So we never, you know, it was no, we didn't want to spend it or anything like that. We had a problem because we needed repairs done. And we had um, filled out paperwork to have the repairs done, this, that, and the other, but nothing was done. Maintenance wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. And you and I have spoken several yes. times about this. Yes. And, and I you know wanted to spoke. meet Sean. You said you wanted and to nice meet Sean. And nice to meet Sean out there, too. <laughs> I'll come down and see you at the end of the meeting, for sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. The, I didn't um, think you existed. <laughs> I do. I heard a lot from her, not from you, though. Yes. Um, what she said is definitely correct. Uh, we have withheld our rent. Uh, I think it was, we withheld it with um, almost a year. So it came up to like 17000 And you held on to every dollar. I remember Beverly telling me that, which was really smart. I mean, a great move for you guys. Right. Um, I don't have a problem paying the rent. Um, I made more than enough to pay the rent. Seventeen thousand didn't hurt me whatsoever. It's not the point. Right, it's not the point. The point of the matter is is getting the work done. Uh, you still having this work still hasn't been performed. It never been performed. 
and uh, we had the CEO. What complex was this? I'm, I'm gonna vo I'm gonna volley this one over to Councilwoman Terry because we have uh, a position that she's on a committee, and this is probably exactly what we've been talking about in regard to uh, some of the repairs and stuff. And now it's it's come out here, so let's get some more information. This is Connor now or Twinbrook. 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 Okay. Aldrin Road. Beverly, you only contacted me six, eight months ago? Yes. Yep. Now, if you go into my, my place of residence right now, it's colder inside than it is outside. And same thing with the wintertime. The heat doesn't work at all. Still no heat. Still no heat. I thought they fixed it. No, they, at sent the, the, they sent the inspector out to, to monitor it. Right. But they came out there with a, um, a temperature gun. Okay. Now, I'm in, I do I do heavy construction, so I know all about the, the, the elements or the heat, the gun that they use to, to, mm -hmm. to register for the, the heat, the yep. temperature. Everybody knows if you if you got electricity going through the wall and you point the gun at the wall, it's, it's going gonna to heat up. It's going to heat up. So they think somebody's stupid, and I'm, I'm saying, look, this is beyond, beyond, beyond that. I said, because it's not registering right. I said, we need something else to modify what's going on with, with this heat. And um, so anyway, the uh, city inspector came out, mm -hmm. and she passed it. And I said... Our inspector did? And when was this? Sorry. This was last... This was, her name was Jen. Yep. When, um, when did this happen? Wrong, and they said she didn't work there anymore. Um, but yes, yeah, she came out and she said, well, I'm registering that it's at 68, 69. So there's nothing we can do. So we got to wait till it gets colder. So, you know, we told her we had been to court and she brought the maintenance men in with her. And she said, I don't have anything to say about this because I am neutral. I'm not on either side. We're not asking you to be on either side. We just ask you to fix the situation. Around the doors, um, there's a, there's a, there's a, the light comes in from the hallway, the front doors downstairs and the back door. They won't seal that up. They had a big, a big um, hole in the wall where they took an air conditioner out, but they never filled it up, they never, they never filtered in or closed it up properly. So the apartment stays cold. And, and then the day that she came, the maintenance people turned the heat on and turned the heat up. Because she notified them. Yeah. When they, when they came, when she came turned it up in the hallway. They, they and I'm sorry. Wherever they turned it up in the building, they turned it up. <laughs> and then after she left, they turned it back off. Mm -hmm. And when was this? I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't know if I heard you tell me. When? How long ago was this? Year? What, last year? Last year. Oh, okay. okay. Be 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 and Sean, way. you guys got to make sure you're just talking into the microphone okay. so we can get everything right. recorded. And not only that, so um, we was in court to get the 17000 to them. In the process, we was in court. They tried to intrude my apartment with your police officers. I got the police report. So they tried to and break into my apartment. Now I get off of work. I work from seven to to whenever I get off. I don't have a nine to five, so if I, I do like I said, I do heavy construction. So if it's a water main break, or emergency, I'm out there to whenever the time I get done. So I don't have a set time. So this probably the time when they when we had got done with court, I went to work. So when I came home from work at eleven o'clock at night, my door was jammed. So I had to call the police department, ask them what's going on with my door. They said, Well, we was just at your house at eleven o'clock this morning. I said, why y'all doing that at my house at 11 o'clock this morning? I said, y'all not even y'all not even in jurisdiction to have a lockout. And the court didn't even provide a lockout because I had all the money. So why y'all trying to break into my apartment with the landlord? So they was like, well, uh, the landlord called. I said, like, again, I said, that's besides the point. Y'all didn't have a lockout permission. Y'all don't do lockouts anyway. Only one that does lockouts is the sheriff's department. <laughs> so... Like I said, I got the locksmith. I had to pay for the locksmith to get inside my house at 11 o'clock. Then I had to turn around and be up by 4 o'clock in the morning to go back to work. So it took a lot of time out of my time to get back in my own house when it shouldn't have haven't been done in the first place. Dave, um, probably Ken, on, you know, get over. I mean, I don't. No, I'll take care of this. Okay, person. Dave, that's our manager. Okay. Um, Dave's going to get on this. Okay. What we found so strange was while we were at court, they we were talking on the phone with Twin Brooks or sure. the, uh, the main the main office, and they asked us. They said, 
are you home right now? We said no. And then when you look at the time of when they tried to get into the apartment, we were at court at that time. So we didn't understand. So they went into your place while you were in court with yes. a scheduled time, and they knew that. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dave definitely will be on it. Okay. okay. And another matter. Yes, sir. Um, my car was hit on their premises. <laughs> so I called the management. I said, well, my car's been hit on your premises. I got the police report for that. They was like, well, you take it out of your rent. rent. Your rent and your rental insurance. My, my rental insurance. I said, why would I take it out of my rental insurance that's on your property? So you want me to deduct this money out of my rental insurance so to take care of this matter when it happened on your property? That doesn't make sense. Dave, I don't know how that works. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. Sorry, there was a car. Somebody, you somebody had your hit my car? car. Right, while I was parked. Okay, that. I mean, typically that's auto insurance. Right, but they said for me to take it. Yeah, but why would I take that my auto insurance and it happened on their property? That's why I played. Well, it's whoever hit you, it's. It was I mean, a hit and run. Yes, right. I mean. So it's a no fault at that right. point. Right. You know, well, typ typically the, um, just because it, it occurred in that parking lot doesn't make it their responsibility generally. I mean, if, depending on the circumstances. So whoever hits you would be responsible. So it's kind of like uh, if you were in Middlebrook Shopping Center and somebody hit you there as a hit and run, it would kind of be the same thing. The fact, unless they did something, um, specific. I can't. I can't imagine okay. other. You know, just okay. with the fact pattern you're giving me. Okay. But I don't know why they would say renters insurance because really that would be auto insurance. insurance. Right. It would be your auto claim. Right. To say that you know somebody hit hit and run. Right. It's a, it's a, mm -hmm. essentially a hit and run. Okay. And just quick question: There's no cameras or witnesses. Um, my car has cameras all the way around it, mm -hmm. but I didn't have it set on at that time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and another issue that we have with this property is the way that they increased the rent. And they said we had to address you about that. And I said, wait a minute. I said, why are you guys going up like 100 to $200 a year in the rent? That's crazy. I mean, I understand, okay, the rent's increasing. You know, we went through the whole thing with the COVID thing. One to 200 a month or a year? For the, for, for the month, meaning like, okay, if we're paying 1300 this yeah. month and then next year they put the next lease on they say okay now you're going to pay 1500 like, how do you guys just jump like that and so nobody's coming forward and saying anything so that's why we went to talk to different people about it they said you got to go to the mayor and talk to him about it because he's the one who can tell them about the rent control and how not to jump up so high it's it's crazy we don't currently have a rent control ordinance in the municipality right now um that's really i mean you know they they have a they have a right to raise the rent. Do I think it's ethical that they raise it that amount of money? Absolutely not. I mean, totally in agreement with you, but we do not have a rent control ordinance. We have discussed it, but it's been on the table. You know, we've okay. taken it off the table, I should say. Okay. So we're gonna put it back on the table and try to- We it. haven't considered it yet. Okay. There's, uh, you know, there's, uh, we have pretty good landlords in town that don't do that that are pretty fair. I mean, unfortunately, there's a couple of them out there. And if you go after the few like that, it hurts all the rest. That's the problem. Right. And uh, it's something that we really need to look at carefully if we're gonna make a decision. Right. Okay? Right. Well, I don't, like I said, the rent control is no issue as long as the property is worth <laughs> doing it with. Yes, sir. That's it. Yes, sir, understood. <laughs> There, there is a state law um, that, well, not it might be more case law that an unreasonable uh, rent increase is not allowed. But I, that's going to depend upon a percentage. Okay. Um, and if there's a question on that, that would also be the landlord tenant court. So that would be, uh, I mean, that would be something that you could take up with them. I don't know whether or not, again, it's going to depend on percentage and Good. it's not a mathematical formula right. it's kind of whether or not it's reasonable okay. and um, that's what I said to her I said this is not reasonable I understand rent goes up I understand rent goes up every year sometimes some people don't and some do not understand we're just coming out of this COVID thing I guess but I understand all of that mm -hmm. but as a tenant and you know and people are really trying to get by and I understand you want your rent 
But be be fair. Come on, this is crazy. On top of that, we're supposed to be going into a recession or whatever. How did so they say? I don't know, cause just paying attention to what's going on. But it's just this is it's not fair. And you know, if if he you know park in the car and the car gets hit and on their property and it's like they don't care. It's like just give us some money as long as you pay our rent. Give us some money, and that's not fair to the tenants because we don't tear up your property. We don't. We don't do no damage to your property. We pay our rent like we're supposed to. But be fair to us. So that's why we came here tonight because they told us to come to you guys. What's with the mayor? <laughs> Dave will get on the issue with the apartment. Okay. Um, obviously, the accident. You know that yeah, goes I'm through your that. insurance. If there was a video, then your insurance company would then go after their insurance right. company. I understand that. I understand that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Sorry Thank for you. what you're going through. Anyone else wishing to make a comment germane to the Township of Ocean? Here we go. Good evening. Trisha Donovan, 161 Delaware Avenue in Oakhurst. First of all, how did the plastic collection go? Do you know? Um, I believe uh, there was some hiccup. Some people's buckets did not get picked up, so we're working on that just to smooth things <coughs> over. But... Um, generally well. Good. So I had no problem. Good. That. Good to hear. Um, I have a um, recommendation. I noticed that there is more construction going on and there's no placards, no way of knowing if it's permitted or not. And I'm hoping, and I think by the UCC rules, that the placard being part of the permit process, that the placard should be posted, or must be posted, shall be posted visibly, mm -hmm. um, which helps in two ways. For a layperson like me, it helps me to know that they have a permit, and it also helps me to know that if they're doing work beyond the scope, that the inspection that will be required with that permit will be bought out, you mm -hmm. know, to bear by the inspector. Um, so I was hoping that um, we could make that mandatory that a placard is given out um, with the permit and it's told you have to post this. I believe that that's the process. Um, it is. Oh my gosh, yeah. if it mm -hmm. is the process, then everything I see going on where there's no placard, and I hate to call, I do, on some Quick things, but yeah. um, I don't yellow. see. You can call. I, in the window. Yeah. <laughs> I they won't know it's you calling. Oh, yes, <laughs> oh, yes they will. Listen to this voice. They know. <laughs> no, no, we might know. We might know, but the other people. Oh, yes. Well, I, I you know, I, I, whether they know or not. Um, we know you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I have noticed, I have noticed more construction. Going That's on. over in your area? We, we can have the zoning um, officers take a ride over there. Unfortunately, I'd have to close my eyes all throughout the municipality to, to avoid seeing what's going on. So anyway, the placard would help proactive inspections. I don't know if you have anybody that goes out um, on a regular basis in certain sections of the town and to just view um, if there's tree, tree work going on or construction work dumpsters out in the front. Um, anyway, um, also, I noticed that um, on some of the past meetings, people have talked about the new construction going up and how it doesn't really fit into the, um, into the scheme of things in the neighborhoods. And as much as I hate the rules and regulations that are imposed on us by the state, the county, the municipality, I'm wondering if a Board of Architectural Review might be the way to go um, just to, to you know, make sure that the houses that are being built are within the um, scheme of, of our municipalities. Just a thought. Um, and I wanted to know if um, you had heard anything about speed tables. Well, I, somebody had said speed bumps um, speed humps are not allowed on the street, which even the county has them up. 
Or are we thinking about doing anything this coming summer? We've had several that were put in place throughout the town. Uh, it wasn't as successful as we would have liked. Um, it actually caused a little more problem than what we've had before. And we have to, uh, the manager's actually looking into it to see whether or not we want to continue with it next year or not. Um, and as I said, the county put them up in their development up on Kozlowski Road. I don't know if we want to get their opinion. If somebody may want to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Anyone else? Seeing here none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Thank you. Have a great night.